um, we want to build a social network. So let's say users can be friends with other users. They can follow each other, write posts, like other posts, and share them. You know this from Facebook, Twitter, whatever. So um, building these relations uh, becomes quite hard on a relational database. <laughs> And that's, um, that's the trick, uh, because relational databases make it sometimes hard to build relations. Um, for this, we want to probably uh, use a graph database. So what is a graph database? It's quite simple. Um, all data is stored in a graph, and this record in nodes, which have properties. Um, between the nodes, uh, we have relations, and the relations can also have properties. It's uh, quite simple to, to organize data and to build complex relations. Um, from the social network example, such a graph can look like this. In an easy example, I um, have here uh, my nodes and uh, relations uh, between the nodes. Have here are uh, some users in orange and posts in pink. Um, this is an actual output uh, of the Neo4j web interface, but more on this later. So what is Neo4j? In fact, Neo4j is a graph database. It is highly scalable, robust, fully assets. Uh, it stores uh, its data in a native graph. So uh, to the features of Neo4j, uh, as I already said, it's uh, based on the graph model. It's fully reliable. It's uh, scalable up to almost big data. Um, another uh, core component of Neo4j is Cypher. This is the query language used uh, to iterate over the graph, store data in it, and uh, probably run uh, select queries. And it is all, uh, also a quite powerful REST interface. The, the common way to talk to Neo4j is probably the Java API, but um, using PHP, we'll use the REST interface, as you see later. So let's first have a look at the web interface, which is uh, quite powerful. <laughs> Looks like this. It's, uh, I, find, I personally I find it very clean. Um, we have here uh, an auto automatically highlighted uh, input line for a Cypher query. As you see, uh, this is Cypher uh, query language. More on this will follow. Um, here in the example, uh, an empty result set and a result set of two nodes. Um, we also have uh, node labels in here, for example. So every node can has a label, um, can use it like a, a type, but um, because uh, Neo4j is a schema-less DB, you know, in fact, we have no schema, but uh, we can apply nodes. Um, we can apply uh, labels to nodes, exactly. We also have different relationship types. I'll show this later. Questions so far? Yes. Um, okay, I have to introduce quite a little bit of background information um, for my question. So um, I'm here because I have to, at the moment, to evaluate so many different um, databases that uh, I almost uh, have no fun on. So, um, I mean, I have heard about the project. Um, the question was uh, if, there, uh, if there are some uh, other graph databases and what's uh, the key point to take me for j um, There are uh, other graph databases. Um, for example, uh, Titan is uh, becoming very popular. Um, 
is a graph database based on C, not on Java, like Neo4j. And there are some others, but <laughs> I can not list uh, them all. Um, the, the main point uh, that I took Neo4j um, is, uh, is it, it is very well documented, has a large community, and uh, it has a very nice query language, as you see later, the Cypher query language. And the REST interface is quite powerful, so it's, uh, it's the graph database, in my opinion, my personal opinion, this is the graph database which uh, best matches the needs we have when we are using a graph in PHP. Okay, um, let's have a look on the Cypher query language. Um, probably the most of you know uh, the standard query language used in, in MySQL, for example. Um, it's quite different. Um, as you see here on the first slide, the main feature is it is human readable, even if it gets complex. So in the first line, we have a simple create statement to create a node. and um, before I said something on the uh, labels, and uh, here a uh, person is the label of the node. Uh, I don't must give a label uh, on a node, but I can can be more than one labeled. So it's just for organization of nodes. Uh, the data uh, which we want to store in the node um, is quite simple to read because it's JSON, <laughs> like. Um, finally, on the fourth line, uh, we return the node we just created. On the web interface, this is actually a screenshot. It will look like this. We have created one single node, and here are the properties. This is nothing special. Okay, so let's create some more nodes. Um, here, same example, uh, we create three different nodes all our person labeled nodes and for every node we have an identifier a b c uh, in this example this can be every string it uh, can be longer than one char but this is for convenience and we return here in the last line all three nodes so this will look like this we've created three nodes here with the properties. So maybe uh, you're asking yourself, what is with well, relations? Because we, we uh, do create nodes, but uh, where are the relations? Uh, why do I don't have uh, foreign keys uh, and all that stuff I know from MySQL? So this is simple. Neo4j handles all objects as, as um, uh, handles all relations as objects. These objects, these relations are quite autonomous because um, every relation object has a source, which is a pointer on the node, and also a target, which points on the node, and the relation can have properties. And that's one of the key features of a graph database. Because uh, to make an example, um, node me uh, works for YMC, and I want to name uh, since when I work for YMC. But this property doesn't belong to me, does not belong to me, and it does not belong to YMC, it belongs to the relation. That's about uh, relation properties. I will show an example in, in Cypher how to store relation properties uh, a bit later. So, let's see an example. Um, we have here a, a match clause so this is a, a select in standard query language. And uh, we match a first person, me, Frank, and a second person uh, named Manuel. Uh, we created before uh, those nodes. So we match them, and you see here the identifiers. Uh, I called them S and T for source and target. But uh, this can be any string, as I already said. and. Uh, we fire another create statement. And th that's exactly the case, how I said it's human readable, because this uh, tiny ASCII art here 
shows the relation between these two nodes. So the relation goes from the identifier S, which is the source. The relation itself has the type it <coughs> works with, and the target is uh, T, the other person. So I return those nodes and the relation itself. This will look like this. Um, in this example, the relation itself has no properties, but it links those two nodes. So um, we can even write a more complex, um, um, more uh, stuffed queries. Um, here on the first line, I, I um, match all person. And on the second line, um, I do a bear statement like known from the standard query language. This is only um, another uh, another flavor which I uh, how I can match nodes. Um, how you want to do it, um, that's your choice. Only wanted to show this uh, second uh, second uh, example how to match nodes. And um, first of all, uh, we create another node uh, which uh, the label com uh, with the label company. And uh, this is my employer YMC uh, with uh, business IT, for example, to give two properties. So we created a node YMC, and directly afterwards uh, we create a relation between me and YMC, and return those nodes and the relation. It will look like this, and as you see, the Neo4j web interface uh, will color the company. Oh, you don't see it. Uh, it's, it's here, it's a bit cutty, but uh, you see there is another color because uh, it's a different label on YMC. It's a company, another person. That's the label thing. Yeah, um, a word to relationship properties. Um, I also, um, I have here the example with the with the uh, since property. Exactly what I said before. Uh, I can here um, make a, a property inside the relation uh, since a timestamp and create it. So um, the return will be those two objects as before, but. The relation itself, the works at the relation, will have the since property now. This allows me to to get even more into data and uh, to uh, find granular uh, uh, analy analyzes on my data sets. So uh, we created a graph. That was all the magic behind graph databases and Neo4j, etc. You see, it's it's not complex and it's not uh, it's not this uh, Java thing as uh, Neo4j uh, might uh, might be like. Uh, you don't uh, need to you don't need to code Java to use a Java service. So um, if we create some other nodes and relations, this example will look looks like this. Every person node has a works with relation uh, to each other, and all have a relation to the company YMC. So using this uh, this quite quite simple relation node model, I can build uh, huge graphs which uh, match data and uh, do very nice things. Questions so far? <laughs> yeah, please. So uh, the question was if the direction of the um, of the relations does matter. Um, the answer is it, it can matter. 
um, you can uh, fetch uh, all the relations um, ignoring the direction if you want. So if you have uh, bi-directional relations, for example, which uh, works, uh, works with definitely is, um, but you can match the direction of the relation. Um, answering this, uh, I must say uh, Neo4j doesn't support uh, bi-directional uh, relations. Um, so every relation will have uh, one direction, but you can ignore it uh, fetching nodes. So uh, the question was um, the redundance uh, between the, those uh, works uh, with the relation uh, to each other and the works for relation. Um, this is quite redundant data. Um, one, one point is, um, in this example, it is redundant, of course, um, but it can be. Um, Second one, uh, I wanted to say um, that there are ways to um, to not have data rather than in a graph. Um, there are uh, some very powerful graph processing algorithms um, do it, doing such things, but uh, I cannot really go into it because uh, the, slot, the speaking slot is, is too sm uh, small for it. But uh, if you want, uh, come in front after the talk, uh, we can talk about it. Any other questions so far? Yeah, I have a question too. Uh, yeah. Well, the name Manuel, there's a circle around it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, this, is, uh, this is an issue uh, in, my, in my presentation. This is only because um, I have a, yeah. This is an example uh, in, in the output of the of the web interface, which uh, makes those uh, nice uh, colored graphs. Um, you can click on the nodes, and this opens uh, this window uh, containing all the properties. And uh, there's a border around uh, this node. Uh, this only means I clicked on manual, and probably more right way uh, there is uh, such a property window. So it's it's only. Uh, flavor of the output. But this does not mean any data related stuff. So um, probably long awaited topic um, using the REST API because we want to um, use Neo4j with, PA, uh, with PHP. Um, the REST API is quite powerful as the web interface is. Um, it covers almost all features. Um, in, a, in a question before, uh, we uh, talked about uh, graph processing algorithms. Um, this is implemented, but cannot overall be used. So yeah, in fact, all features are available, but <laughs> you probably should not use them. Um, it works out of the box. So if you install Neo4j, uh, you will have the REST API. As you uh, will see, um, it is based on a JSON. It is fast. And you have a transactional HTTP endpoint, so uh, you're able to uh, manage transactions over the REST API. So uh, what we want to do with PHP uh, is call this transactional HTTP endpoint using curl. First of all, uh, a little example, just using HTTP, plain HTTP without PHP. For example, to create a node, uh, we can send uh, this 
uh, JSON statement as a post method, uh, as a post request to the transactional HTTP endpoint. And uh, we write down our Cypher statement and the property used in it. it this uh, makes it quite simple because uh, data and the statement itself is is not in the same line, so uh, this makes it easy to generate JSON which, uh, with PHP. The response we get um, will show us um, our data we entered. Um, just a, just a little hint: uh, this was a this was a kind of direct insert, so a transaction is opened. The, the node is committed and the transaction is closed in one step. It is also possible to open a transaction, uh, create five nodes with 30 relations, and then commit a transaction. Yeah, that was it. Um, we also can ex uh, execute the uh, Cypher queries, uh, which is the key feature of this whole uh, JSON thing. So. Uh, we have here a, a match query matching or uh, matching the name I and fetching a relation and another node. So uh, we are fetching all nodes which are related to the node I. Response uh, will look like this. Um, we have here in the first line uh, we have the columns showing uh, what we got. Uh, so uh, we have here the node property name and node property age, and of course the type of the relation. And we get two nodes uh, in here. So it's uh, quite simple to, to create data and uh, get it back uh, without uh, any big overhead. So that was it about uh, Cypher, the query language itself. Um, if you're interested and you want to know more, um, and it can do a lot more, go to docsnia4j.org or ask me. <laughs> so um, let's get to the usage in PHP. Um, we will or we can use, of course we can write it by hand, but uh, there are there are uh, some libraries which make this easy. The first one is uh, Neo4j PHP by Everyman. It's kind of a call wrapper uh, to call the REST interface. And it makes it uh, quite simple to, uh, to manage uh, those uh, statements. An example of an implementation, we do the whole auto-loading by Composer, or we can do a require orgy, whatever you want. And uh, we instantiate a client. Yeah, this, this dollar C, <laughs> what you don't see here. And uh, we instantiate uh, such a client. And uh, it will, uh, we can here pass an array, an array of uh, configuration. Uh, with no configuration, it will connect to localhost 7474. This is where Neo4j runs uh, defaultly. So, um, on the client, oh, sorry, on the client, uh, we can call the function make node and it will return a node object. <coughs> we can create properties easily like this and call the method save so the properties. Uh, uh, are saved into the node and the node is submitted to Neo4j. After we've done that, uh, we can, for example, uh, get the ID uh, out of the object which, which is assigned by Neo4j. Yeah. Okay, maybe um, this is a bit too low level, so uh, who of you uh, knows that the Doctrine library? Okay, so um, we can use uh, the Neo4j database uh, like we can use MySQL and Doctrine. It's 
This uh, library is called uh, Higher Voice Neo4j PHP OGM. OGM for Object Graph Mapper. And yeah, this is a Doctrine 2 style entity mapper for Neo4j graph databases. So it implements uh, Doctrine Common. And uh, you can use uh, annotations to map the entities as you, as you probably know it from Doctrine. So let's have a look on this. First, uh, we want to map an entity using those annotations. For example, we create an entity object called user, and we have to give it an ID and tag it with the annotation OGM auto. This means that there will be an automatic ID assigned by your 4 j and we have a second property called full name, which we uh, annotate as a property, and we say it should be go to the index. So let's have a look at uh, those annotations. First, we have the entity annotation. And uh, using this, um, I have to use this on every class I want to uh, define as an entity object. So uh, optionally, I can specify a repository class, as, as I can in Doctrine 2. And I can assign uh, labels uh, for Neo4j, as, you say, as, you, uh, as we did before uh, in the web backend. So uh, I already said something about the auto annotation. So let's have a look at the property annotation. Um, Maybe I have some properties in my object which uh, I don't want to have in my, in my graph, which I only use local, for example, a, a plain password. So uh, every property, every class member I annotate with OGM property will be sent to the graph. Um, optionally, I can give it a format if I give in, if I give it I give it no format, it will be a string. Then we have the index annotation. This is kind of special um, because it only works with the property annotation. Um, I, I have to go um, to go back to Neo4j itself. Uh, Neo4j has a Lucene search index natively, so. Um, uh, it supports um, it supports fast searching, and uh, if you, if I want to have this property indexed in the search index, so if I want to uh, match this uh, this name or search by it, I have to tag it as an index. Then, last but not least, I have those uh, many to one and many to many relations. Which, um, which only means that in this dollar main actor is another entity object which is being linked. Um, here I can specify a relation name here acts in or works for to get the example uh, from before. Um, the many-to-many -many relation works ex exactly like this, uh, excepting that the variable is an array instead of a single object. Questions to the annotations. Okay. So let's make an example. Uh, let's. Oh, sorry. Sorry? The question was, uh, was um, how to add uh, the relation properties. Um, this uh, 
<laughs> yeah, the answer is quite simple. Um, the library doesn't support the relation properties yet. So uh, we're working on, working on that to get it running. But the uh, problem, in fact, is that, uh, that it uh, drifts away from the doctrine common specification. And we have to know uh, if, we want, if we're wanting to go with doctrine or if we are wanting to go uh, to uh, Neo4j. But there are uh, people working on that. <laughs> Okay, so let's store an entity in the, uh, other questions? Okay, let's store an entity in the graph database. Um, first of all, we have to instantiate an entity manager like we have to do in Doctrine. Um, this is quite simple. Um, uh, we can say uh, $EM is a uh, new class entity manager and provides all the settings uh, we have to give but in fact we are wanting to do this over a DIC container or something so I uh, switched the instantiation of the entity manager it is well documented uh, if you are if you're interested um, yeah um, the second line uh, we have to get the repository object for our entity, in this case, entity user. And now we can find, for, except, uh, for example, a user called Chando. Um, we have those uh, magic functions, as it is in Doctrine, so you can use every function um, find one by and the property name, and it will work. Uh, there was a question, I think. No? Um, okay, so uh, we fetched uh, for no, uh, first node. Now uh, we create a user chain here. Uh, so we instantiate a new user, uh, set the full name, and call the function add follow while uh, follow is a, is a many-to-one relation. And uh, here we pass the object chun. So if, you, if we uh, persist uh, this chain person object and call entity manager flush, um, both of those uh, two nodes, entities, nodes, um, will be sent to Neo4j and a relation between uh, those two will add it uh, what the type follows. Yeah. Um, next, uh, we want to fetch an entity from the graph. Um, uh, for uh, doing this, uh, we can also do, like before, uh, we get an entity manager and the repository for the user. We call uh, find one by full name, or we can call find by country if we have a field country in the entity. Um, you maybe uh, you maybe uh, have seen that we can call find by or find one by. So if we uh, call find one by, there will only be one object. Um, if we call find by, it will be an area of objects, of all objects matching. Um, as you see here, uh, we can call find by directly, uh, providing an array with a, with a, with a criteria, for example, with a status and an email, and we will also have returned the collection of objects. Questions? Okay. Um, like Doctrine and every other modern um, persistence API does it, uh, we can use events. Uh, for an example, uh, we can write a simple class called pre-persist-listener and implement a function named pre-persist. 
<laughs> so we got a pretty persistent event. And uh, we can do our stuff here, for example, call another API or doing something on the entity itself. And that's, that's all what we need for our event listener. What we need to do is um, we have to create an event manager. And the pre-persist listener we created before, and we have to inject it into the event manager. And after, we have to set the event manager into the entity manager. This looks quite complex, um, but is needed. Uh, in, a, in a modern framework, you will do this uh, using dependency injection because yeah, it doesn't make sense to, to do this manually. Yeah, um, this is the list of available events. All those events accepting statement execute, uh, pre-statement execute and post-statement execute are from are adapted from Doctor Uncommon. So um, and the whole event and um, the whole event uh, management is, is uh, adapted from Doctrine. So you can go to the Doctrine documentation if you want to know anything about it. So let's let's go to the fun part, um, building cipher queries, because this is what the, what the graph database makes a graph database. We uh, can take the setup uh, we, we had before, and directly on the entity manager, we can call the function create cipher query. Um, after uh, we start with a node, uh, for example, the person node, John, and we give an identifier to this node. So after, uh, we can build a match query, and this can be complex if it has to be complex. And we can say, OK, John uh, follows any node, and we uh, tag similar interests on every other node which follows the followed by node. And uh, we can go further and take those uh, similar interests from here and fire another match to all fellows and call a potential match. So at the end, we have a potential match, which is the result of a quite complex cipher query, and return it. We also have a limit, and finally we call a get list, which will be a return an array of objects. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, what we can do uh, with the graph. Uh, what is uh, quite complex with a relational database because this is. Yeah, regarding uh, production, this is a quite simple query. It can be much more complex, but it remains readable. Yeah. So um, we are almost at the end. Um, some final thoughts of me personal. Um, there are some drawbacks, as we already uh, got uh, from the questions. On the OGM library, um, I will not recommend it for very large data sets uh, because this uh, whole entity mapping is a kind of overhead. So if you have a billion nodes, uh, huge data sets, you probably want to use, a, you probably don't want to use a, the entity mapping. Uh, it also doesn't support streaming, so if uh, you fire calls to the uh, REST API returning too much data, you will get a memory exhaustion in PHP. Um, it's also not uh, feature complete yet. Not, um, 
as you heard before, it does not support uh, relationship properties. Neither it does support uh, graph traversals um, because um, to do this, uh, we have to go to the Java API. And probably the PHP and Neo4j people are a few. So um, regarding Neo4j and PHP, um, it's, it will be nice doing things with these two, uh, with these two um, software stacks because Neo4j is the most common graph database and PHP is probably the most common scripting language for the web. Both is, both is widely used, um, both have a big community and also in PHP there are other great persistent libraries uh, from which we can learn. So using Neo4j and PHP together will be great, but we, we um, have to join forces, spread the word, contribute if you want, um, go to GitHub, NeoOxygen. This is the organization which uh, maintains the most uh, PHP, Neo4j stuff and bundles. Go to Neo4j, develop PHP, check it out, and play with it, contribute. Are there some questions left? Please. Sorry? So uh, the question was about the commercial, uh, commercial uh, Neo4j license. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I personally uh, work with the uh, free license of Neo4j. Um, in the commercial license, uh, you have a cluster setup uh, which allows you to uh, have many Neo4j instances. Um, if you need it uh, big, if you need it in production, you probably want this. Um, you also have uh, paid support, what you don't have with the open source license, yet that are exactly the facts. Um, I, maybe there are more differences, but uh, I, I, must, uh, I have to consult the, the Neo4j documentation. I don't know them, all the differences between those licenses. Other questions? Uh, the question was um, if there are uh, libraries to uh, render the Neo4j data into graphs. Um, the answer is, yeah, quite a, kind of tricky. Um, Neo4j has Neo4j itself has a has a quite powerful rendering of uh, the uh, graphic rendering of the uh, nodes and relationships, as you saw in the uh, Web API screenshots. There are also some uh, JavaScript libraries doing this, but I cannot name it. But there are some, yeah. Other questions? No. Yeah, then uh, thank you. Uh, visit me on the web. Uh, drop me a line on Twitter. Uh, the the slides will be online soon on uh, speaker deck and uh, thank you all. <laughs>